Fortune magazine has just named Google the best company to work for in America, and we're betting that some of that has to do with all the free food there, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But you may not know that Google's legendary cafeterias are as optimized as their search engine itself. From color-coded foods to subliminal cues, they've developed a special system for keeping their employees fit and healthy. ABC's Juju Chang got an inside look. It's lunchtime at the Google office in Manhattan, a place that defines free food, all you can eat, 24-7. I'd like to show you the salad bar. Okay. Ashley Moak is a happy Googler who wants to show me around. I'm saving myself because there's a lot more. Okay, good. Like everything Google, the cafeteria has been hyper-analyzed and re-engineered, which means it's loaded with nudges to literally nudge people toward healthy choices. So when we come right in the entranceway over here, what's really nice is you see the salad bar first. And if you're starving like me, you'll go for the first thing you see. Exactly. Research shows people tend to pile up on the first thing they see. So the salad bar now occupies prime real estate. There's all these different color-coded signs here to okay. let you know what's healthy. And obviously everything right, in the salad bar is more or this less really good. pretty healthy. It wasn't always this way. The healthy nudges began when Googlers started complaining that they were packing on the pounds. Some people may gain 15 pounds when they start working here. Because the food's so great. Hopefully, yes. So basically it's your fault. Uh, I'm partially to blame, yeah. <laughs> Joe Lombombarda is the executive chef at Google's Manhattan office. He says the unlimited food perk, originally designed to maximize productivity and loyalty, had an undesired side effect. I don't think I'd ever leave the cafeteria if I worked here. Uh, a lot of people don't. <laughs> so now, smaller plates and takeout containers nudge you to take smaller portions. No one wants to be seen with too much on their plate. I'm only halfway through the food station and my plate is full. Naughty desserts aren't taken away, they're just placed way in the back. Scarlet labels shout out that these calories count. But they're offered in small bite-sized servings, enough to satisfy a craving, but not a diet buster. Do you design with a certain size or calorie or bite count in mind? Yes, we try and keep it small. Let them have that beautiful, delicious dessert, but not gorge on it. It's uh, behavioral economics, decision science. Jennifer Kurkowski heads a department at Google called People Analytics. She crunched the numbers and then overhauled how food was presented. These micro kitchens were famous for tempting junk food dispensers. This is where the M&Ms used to be. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine, you come up here, you pull this handle, and you get... A lot of love. Yes. But just swapping out cereal for the chocolate made a huge impact. We found that when we moved the M&Ms from those gravity bins to these containers, didn't take them away, everything's still there. In seven weeks, New York Googlers consumed 3.1 million fewer calories from M&Ms. Yes, 3.1 million fewer calories from M&Ms, just because you have to look for them. People like to know their numbers at Google. We're a bit of a data-driven company. <laughs> they say at Google you're never more than 150 feet away from some sort of food. We're busy. Everyone has work that they're trying to get done, and so you don't want to have to think a lot about what it is they're going to grab for a snack. So let's make the thing that people default to the healthiest one possible. The drink selection was also ripe for behavior modification. There are sodas here, but it's not the first thing you see. What you see at eye level right here is the water. Uh -huh. and, and you have to hunt for the soda. We put all of the water bottles up, and we found that Googlers consume 47% more water when the bottles were right there and they could just grab it. Sophia Bushman gained more than the Google 15. The candy was very um, alluring. And, and free-flowing. And free-flowing, literally free-flowing. Um, you know, we had these pull down the machines. Yeah. yeah, they were dangerous. <laughs> Now, like most Googlers, she says she's grateful for the nudges. Once they moved the M&Ms, did you eat less M&Ms? Absolutely. Ate less candy, ate less, um, you know, sort of chips or any sort of the salty snacks. The fruit is more on display. I think everybody really enjoys natural, healthy food. We just, we're busy and we grab whatever's right in front of us. She's trimmed down thanks to in-house exercise classes and the healthier food choices. Do people feel manipulated? because the environment is structured to make them behave in a certain way. You know, how can I feel um, manipulated that I'm being encouraged to be healthy? You know, if anything, I'm grateful that a company that essentially needs me to do productive work to help them build their, their business actually cares to help me be a healthier individual. I can't complain. Anybody who does is perhaps misguided.
choices. You don't have to work for Google to like a nudge here or there to help you make healthy choices, even when you're not aware that you're making it. For Nightline, I'm Juju Chang in New York.